Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian with the Ohio University Math Department. In this video, I'll be introducing angles and triangles in metric geometries. This material is produced for Ohio University Math 3110, 5110, College Geometry. Our topics will be, I'll discuss the definitions of angle and triangle, I'll give an example, and I'll discuss briefly the idea of extreme points of angles and triangles. This material is from section 3.4, Angles and Triangles, in the book Geometry, A Metric Approach with Models by Millman and Parker. The homework for this video is the collection of, of four exercises from section 3.4 shown there. Well, let's just jump right in with the definition of angle and triangle. This symbol is spoken angle ABC. You can use this symbol when ABC are non-collinear points in a metric geometry. And what that symbol means is a set, the union of ray BA and ray BC. Some additional terminology, the vertex of this angle is the point B, whatever letter is in the middle of that symbol. And let's discuss the definition of triangle. This symbol is spoken, this should say triangle, triangle ABC, and the usage is the same as the usage for the angle symbol, that is ABC have to be non-collinear points in a metric geometry. And what that symbol means is the following set. Triangle ABC is the union of these three line segments. Some additional terminology, the vertices of the triangle are those points, ABC. The sides or edges of the triangle are these segments. So for example, let A, B, and C be those three points. You might recognize those points. Those are the same points that we used in example one of the previous video. For those three points, Euclidean angle ABC looks like this. So in this diagram, here's A, here's B, and here's C. Ray BA is this ray going down. That's a, a vertical ray. Ray BC is this ray. So the union of those two rays is angle ABC, Euclidean angle ABC. For the same three points, Poincaré angle ABC is shown here. Here's point A, here's point B, and here's point C. So Poincaré ray BA is this ray with the missing endpoint at 0, 0. This ray doesn't keep going down below the x-axis. It has a missing endpoint at this location, 0, 0. Ray BC is this quarter circle. has a missing endpoint here. Now notice, following my usual practice for Poincaré lines and rays and segments, I always show the whole line that the segment or ray is part of. So this is um, this ray is lying on a Poincaré type 2 line that has uh, that description, the, the semicircular shape centered at point zero, 00 and with radius 13. The ray BA is lying on this type 1 line, which has that description. Its x-coordinate is 0. Let's go on. Euclidean triangle ABC is shown here. Here's A, here's B, and here's C. Nothing surprising there. But Poincaré triangle ABC is shown here. Here's A, here's B, and here's C. Now, uh, again, I've, I've drawn these segments as part of uh, Poincaré lines. So segment AB is this red segment that lies in this line, this type 1 line, that has a missing endpoint down there on the x-axis. So I draw the entire Poincaré line, and I highlight the segment that's part of it. Uh, segment BC is this green arc that's part of this green type 2 line that we discussed before. 
the line with center at 0 comma 0 and uh, radius 13. Now segment CA is uh, part of line CA. Now Poincaré line CA has kind of a messy description. It has a center at 6 comma 0. That's not surprising because points A and C have the same height. They're both five units above the x-axis. So we know that they're going to lie on a, on a semicircular shape whose center is midway between their x-coordinates of 0 and 12. So we should not be surprised that this center is located at x equals 6. But the radius is messy. The radius is, well, let's see. This is 6 over and 5 up. So that's uh, square root of 61 is the radius. So this type 2 line would be described this way, 6L square root of 61. So the missing endpoints of this line would be 6 plus square root of 61 comma 0 and 6 minus square root of 61 comma 0. That's the end of that example. Let's go on. The last thing that I want to talk about is the idea of extreme points of angles and triangles. We talked about extreme points in the previous video. Uh, there's, there's a lemma and a theorem and a lemma and a theorem about extreme points of angles and, and uh, triangles. So lemma 3.4.1 says the only extreme point of an angle is the vertex. And a quick corollary of that is that if two angles are equal, you can say that their vertices are the same point. You cannot say that the other points are the same point. You don't know if A is equal to D or, or not, or, or maybe equal to F or not. You can't say anything about the, the uh, points that are not the vertex. But if two angles are equal, then you can say for sure that their vertices are the same point. Now here there's a typo. Lemma 3.4.3 .3 says the only extreme points of a triangle I sh this should say, are the vertices. So a quick corollary of that is, if two triangles are equal, then you know that their set of vertices are equal as sets. Now that's a little subtle. For instance, I can draw a triangle here. So here I have a triangle, a single triangle. And this triangle can be denoted by two different symbols. Notice that those two triangles are the same triangle. It's the same set of points. So this blue set is the same set as this red set. Now notice that point A is not the same point as point D. A is over here, D is over here. Point B is not the same point as point E. B is over here, E is over here. It does happen that C is the same point as F. But you can't say that the vertices all match at all. But you can say this. You can say that those two sets are equal. Now notice that order doesn't matter. So the fact that uh, A and D are not the same point doesn't matter. I can still list them first in the set because order doesn't matter when you're describing sets. Well, that's the end of the video. Thank you.